Hello, everybody. Welcome to Mastering Medicine with Picmonic. Uh, we are live here today from Phoenix, Arizona. It's uh, toasty, like 115 degrees out. That's why I think there's like Ooh. a you in this room right now, I'm making me look a little like a smurf. But uh, joined today by uh, Dr. Taylor Brana. How are you doing, Taylor? I'm doing amazing. How are you doing? Excellent, man. It's a true pleasure to have you on our webinar and series today. Uh, where are you calling in from? So I'm in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania right now. Nice, nice. And what? Uh, why are you in Philly? Give give everybody, both our readers and yours, the listeners today all around the world, an idea of uh, why Philly. Yeah, so Philly is actually an interesting story. So I'm from California originally. And uh, fun fact about me, just to like right in the beginning, when I was six years old, I started doing gymnastics. Um my mom's side of the family is Russian, traditional Russians. They put kids in gymnastics, started training at a young age. And uh, the reason I bring that up is I trained my whole life. And then when I went to college, I was looking for schools with um, athletic scholarships. And there's not many teams with men gymnastics scholarships. So I got accepted at Temple University in Philly. T U. Anyways, so I got into Temple and um, they gave me uh, initially an academic and then, and then an athletic scholarship. So I came over to Philly and stayed ever since. Love it, love it. And so uh, to catch everyone else up, so we've got Philly uh, and you are currently a second year intern in your psych or a second year resident in uh, psych, is that correct? Yeah, so, so in about a week and a half or so, I will be officially a PGY2 um, psychiatry resident. That's correct. So I'm just rounding up. I'm already giving you intern. You're done. Congrats. On to the next step. Thank you so much. Um, and so today, and obviously psychiatry uh, probably has an interesting tie back to one of the things we want to talk about today. So you are the founder of happydoc.com and the podcast uh, Happy Doc. Did I say that correctly? Where do you find these? How do people know what they are? And then we're going to get into why did this come about? What are some of the lessons uh, that you ultimately have learned? And how are you going to share some of that back with uh, the audience today? Sure, sure. Yeah. And uh, it's the happy doc. I know a lot of people will miss it with the letter with the in the beginning. So the happy doc.com. And uh, if you search the happy doc on like iTunes and all those channels, you'll find us. Excellent. And what is the happy doc? Where did this come from? And why? Sure, sure. So the happy doc, and I think, you know, all the listeners here are going to really connect with this. Um, basically, uh, when I was finishing up college, probably the best shape of my life, really good physically, mentally, emotionally. And then I went into medical school, super excited. And the one reason I went to medical school, I always wanted to look up health. I always wanted to look up like nutrition. Uh, I was reading articles. I was interested about good health. So obviously pretty natural, do well in college, go into medical school, learn more about health and kind of explore that, right? Yep. And then um, go into medical school. Um, first year was tough, second year was harder. Uh, and then third year, so I, I take step one and uh, I'm pretty much realizing I'm probably in the worst shape of my life. Um, mm -hmm. I never had like body pains in my life. My body was killing me uh, in a really bad emotional place. And I was really unhappy. And then meanwhile, you guys know, if you go online, you're reading these articles about physician suicide, you're reading uh, about uh, burnout in medicine. And meanwhile, I'm like, crap, I'm like, you know, X amount of dollars in the hole. You know, we're all, you know, we all took out some loans to do this. Um, you know, you put in a lot of energy and time into the whole process. And I'm, I'm realizing for myself, I'm like, crap, I'm not excited about this anymore. And I go into my first clinical rotation, um, internal medicine. And the doctor I'm working with, I asked her, I said, hey, what gets you excited about medicine? And she tells me um, I'm excited for my seven days off because she had a seven on seven off schedule, yeah. right? And so I'm like, wait, so you're telling me like you're doing this for whatever reason and you're not excited about this and you just want to have vacation. I mean, I want to go in and be excited to see patients. I want to go in and and be, you know, 
you know, pumped about the experience. I, I don't want to just live for the weekend. You know what I mean? I want to, I want to be happy. I want to be a happy doctor. And so that kind of evolved into that question. Um, is it possible to be a happy doctor in today's age? And uh, who can I reach out to, to kind of uh, speak to and figure out like, what are they doing that's different? So that's kind of the whole basis of the podcast, reaching out to people who are excited about medicine, who love what they're doing, who feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And kind of breaking down, like, what's what's the secret sauce? Like, what are they doing that's different? How are they living their lives? What are the habits they're doing? Um, and kind of getting a sense of what we can do today, like, in the present moment. I'm very functional. Like, so it's not, like, all philosophical questions. It's, like, really, like, what do we do on a daily basis to kind of just feel better and, and be excited and enjoy the work we're doing? I love it. I love it. And it's, it's, it's interesting. You know, I think some of the parallels of uh... – you know, physical, mental, spiritual exhaustion are some of the things that I think we've even talked about briefly in the past. And it's it's very prevalent, obviously, in medicine and healthcare and just almost anywhere in, in, in the world in life to, yeah. to really burn out, to feel exhausted, to be overburdened, but especially during the, the rigorous track of becoming, let's say, a physician. Yeah. So you've, uh, you've had the opportunity over the last, how many, two years? Basically, to, uh, it'll be two years soon. I, I think, you know, third year basically. So yeah, I mean, basically a year and a half to two years at this point with the podcast for sure. So two years of talking with other students, doctors, experts, and uh, getting a lot of tips and advice. And I hope that we can bottle some of that up today and you can share it with the world on uh, on some of these, these key points. And it's actually interesting. You worked with... Um, Johnny Antoni, one of the art, uh, the art director for uh, Picmonic, and created yep. a Picmonic. So I think we first need to explain what Picmonic is real quick so people understand. But then what it is, is you actually created a Picmonic with our art director uh, to kind of encapsulate some of these key points, right? And yep. what we're going to do over the next 50 minutes is walk through some of those those key points. And I really want to give you an opportunity to, to share this because I think it's invaluable and things that are either not known or easily forgotten. So yeah. Um, so first off, what is Picmonic? Just so that everyone has has a quick understanding. Picmonic, um, so I actually started Picmonic as a third year medical student because I was also struggling, but I was struggling predominantly with the ability to learn and retain all the complex information. Uh, biochem, micro, farm, uh, too many little details, never felt like I had enough time. And, you know, my, my just, you know, between studying first aid or looking at QBanks, I was not able to retain the information long term. So I started leaning on pictures and stories, which became picture mnemonics and picmonic, uh, to help me with those details. It was like once I had a crazy, funny story and a picture to associate it with, I could always remember that information long term. And after I took step, uh, we ended up creating the picmonic learning system so that we could actually take all of these uh, visual mnemonics and share them with the world, right? And that was kind of our platform. Um, and there's also this generator which enables other people to create. So you worked with Johnny to create a Picmonic, which we're going to show now, um, that that actually has some of the key points uh, from from maybe your lessons learned. Or how would you even describe what are the nine key points? Uh, what how do you, how do you wrap this up? What does it take to be a happy doc? Yeah, yeah. So actually, before we you know go to that, I want to first off thank Picmonic. Uh, for you guys welcoming on welcoming me onto this, um, I have to say, like you guys helped me get through my step exams, and I'm not like embellishing this. Um, I actually read a book. I'm currently reading this book. It's called um, "Working Under Pressure," I believe that's the title. Okay. And there's research to show that when you're under pressure, aka boards, crazy amounts of pressure. Um, memorizing facts and like remembering rote information is really tough, but right. having an image, um, there's some like tweak or, uh, almost like hack in that when it's an image, your system is able to recall it much easier. So Picmonic literally, um, is a tool that will let you under pressure, remember information. And it definitely worked for me. There's stuff I still remember that like, they're like, Taylor, how do you know that fact? And it's actually from a Picmonic card. I so love um, definitely want to mention that. So in terms of this Picmonic card for you guys, and again, it's a memory tool, just kind of keep things organized for you. Um, number one, we're going to talk about is, uh, doing what you love. And that's represented by that heart over there. If you see that in that section over there. So number, yep. you want to actually go through the entire thing first, or do you want to go step by step? 
Um, let's do a brief overview. I'll just tell you kind of like all of the kind of concepts and then we'll go one by one and just kind of dig a little deeper into that. All right. So number one, doing what you love and that's represented by a heart. Perfect. And then number two, positive mindset. Number three, the art of medicine. Number four, protection. Number five, balance. Number six, fun and relaxation. Number seven, ownership. Number eight, action. And number nine, the big picture. All right, so we have uh, an illustration here with a lot going on, but ultimately this is, uh, this is supposed to act as a mental image or a memory anchor to, to help uh, those listening today take these nine points that Dr. Brown, Brown is about to share with us and remember them long term. So let's go one by one. And I, and I really want you to, to kind of break each one of these down and explain why are they in this picture? What do they have to do with actually becoming a happy doc, more fulfilled, happy in your life? Sure. Let's do it, guys. So um, number one, doing what you love. So uh, I want to preface this, you know, you have to have a reason for putting the crazy amounts of time that you're going to be spending in medicine, okay? So it really has to come from, and like that's why the image is a heart. It has to come from your heart. You have to have a passion for it, okay? Now, for a lot of people, especially with me, for example, I went straight through, okay? I went straight through from college into medical school. Some people have a non-traditional path. I actually love when you don't go into medicine right away, but it's great if you did, but you really have to figure that out. And the reason I mention all this is uh, when I was starting to like think about you know this presentation and everything, uh, it, it was kind of like serendipitous. A 21-year-old girl comes up to me. She's asking me for some advice. And she yeah. said, uh, she's like, Taylor, like, I don't know what to do with my path. I'm finishing up college. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do in life. Yeah. And she was asking like, what should I do? And I'm like, look, like, I don't know. Okay. Right. I have no idea what it is that your passion is, what you're excited about. The biggest thing for, for people who don't know what they're about to go into, uh, the biggest thing for them is you have to taste lots of stuff. Okay. You have to go out and you have to try lots of things. You know, number one, if you don't know, go explore, explore your interests, go shadow a bunch of doctors in different fields, go talk to PA students and, and, uh, PA, uh, you know, fully fledged PAs, go, go see other fields, business, um, computer science. You want to make an informed decision and you want to know that you're doing it for the right reasons. You want to see, like, you want to go into it with a sense of like excitement, right? So you, you can't know what you love if you haven't tried lots of things. Are you going into, into it for the money? If you're doing that, trust me, there are better ways to make money than going into medicine. Are you doing this because your mom or your dad, your significant other, your grandma, your grandfather told you to do this? Well, you're going to live with a sense of resentment. Are you doing it for fame, reputation, or status? It's not all it's cracked up to be, okay? Right. You have to do medicine and choose your focus after you've put in the honest effort to see lots of things and people living that life. Call people, get in front of their faces, spend time with them, understand their lifestyle, go into private work, go into the public work, go into rural medicine, look at entrepreneurship, tech, journalism, whatever it is, figure out what you actually love, try it out, and then you're making that true informed decision that you can be excited about. Now, a lot of people listening to this might already be in medical school, right? So, you know, or they, they, if they're a little bit further along, they're in residency. Regardless, you still have areas to taste, you know, subspecialties, areas of different areas of medicine to look into. Uh, I'm a resident and I'm running a podcast. You can expand mm -hmm. your reach and think about things in different ways. So have that sense of passion, excitement for what you do. It'll really shift your mindset. I love it. And it's interesting because I feel like a lot of people, especially if they have a preconceived notion that they want to become a doctor for fame or money or status or because mom or dad was, uh, right, that's an easy path to start walking down and end up in a place where you don't want to. So the idea that what you're recommending is 
test lots of things, try lots of things, experiment, get out there, see the world. Uh, there's obviously a lot of opportunities and things that you can be passionate about. And doing what you love is more important than doing uh, something for the wrong reasons. It's almost kind of... Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, you guys, you know, as you're going through this process, you're going to find that, um, especially even with your friends, you'll hear stories all the time, Ron. I'm sure you've heard stories from friends. You know, I went into uh, X field and I did it for a while and I, I like literally could not work anymore. Like they're just like lack of passion and right. excitement. I mean, I to go through medicine, medicine's grueling and tough as it is. Yeah. is. And then to not have that heart to be like, I want to help people, you know, in that real like deep like way with that kind of research based scientific mind reading studies and going through that's tough. <laughs> Um, you, you have to be crazy strong to get through something like that and not be excited about it. So baseline, you have to be pumped. I love it. I love it. Well, so, and maybe that ties to the second point. Uh, so number one is doing what you love, right? So yeah. the second point, uh, is positive mindset, um, yeah. having a positive mindset. So can you help break down what that means? Because I think you even have a little bit different of a take on it than just like a, a generic version. So what does it mean to you? Yeah. So, you know, for a lot of people will say that like staying positive, it's being happy. And mm -hmm. I don't even, even with the podcast, like the happy doc, I'm not like perpetually like always happy, right? Like I'm not always excited and loving my life. I'll get sad all the time. But what I really mean is that your, your goal, like ultimately big picture is you're going for a growth mindset and you're ultimately moving in a positive trajectory. Okay. So um, that's kind of like the, when I say positive, it means you're going towards this big goal, dream or passion of yours. You're moving towards that direction. That's you're moving positively. And, um, there's, you know, as I was reflecting on this, there's a book, um, I want you guys just to be aware of it's called anti-fragility. It's by Nassim Nicholas Taleb. You guys can look it up if you want to. And his idea is called anti-fragility things that get stronger with more disorder and chaos. You stay strong and you breathe through chaos. You learn to accept this crazy storm of medical school and residency. You take advantage of the difficulties and learn from them. You use all of that pain to find areas of inspiration that you can improve upon and help a lot of people with. You see an issue in medical school, you don't sit there and complain. You think positively. You ask, how can you make your school a better place? You bring up an initiative. You think creatively to solve a problem. You, the chances are that that issue that you're looking at, that problem in your school, for example, you know, there's many other people that feel the same way. Talk about it. How can you make a culture, a culture shift? So as you're hearing that, you, you kind of see what I'm doing there. All the issues and the problems, those are areas to improve upon. Um, had a tough day um, where you're on your clinical rotation and a doctor says, you don't know this, what's going on? You can take it to heart and be mad at yourself. You'd be like, you know what? He was trying to offer me the fact that I need to work on my knowledge. I'm going to read, I'm going to read up on this. Right. So we use positive thinking, positive mindset to take challenges, struggles, being anti fragile and look at the problems and make the, make things better with that. So the belief that you can actually change something makes things better for yourself and those who will see that you're like, wait, what's, what's going on? Like he was kind of, in a tough spot there and he took that really well like what what is that so being positive is a really amazing tool and highly highly like suggest that you may might want to look at things not take things to heart so much but right. ultimately grow and have that growth mindset another additional part to that is deep forgiveness i think this is an area with being positive that people uh might not get right away um, you have to forgive yourself for not knowing everything. You have to forgive yourself for being in tough times and not knowing exactly what's going on. In med school, you're going into this crazy place where in college you did really well. You got A's. Obviously, you went in, you got into med school, right? So you sh you were shining. You're doing great. You might not have the same experience in med school. You might have tough situations where you don't know what to do. And forgiving yourself constantly that it's okay not to know stuff. Be super, super humble and ask for help. You know, ask a stupid question if you don't know what's going on. The worst thing is to act like you know something and you really don't and later it could really bite you. 
So just be humble because the mindset is forgive yourself and grow. Grab, grab that opportunity to ask that question and it'll really help you. And when you ask questions, especially like in lecture or something, you know, that's an opportunity for everyone around to learn because if you have the question, a lot of people do as well. And so it's never a dumb question. Yeah. Dropping the ego is, is sometimes hard to do because everyone thinks that they're going to be the smartest when they get to med school and you're surrounded by brilliant people. So, yeah. um, but ultimately, you know, the, the path is challenging, right? And there will be, it's like a roller coaster. There's going to be highs, but there will be lows, no matter who you are, what program you're in, uh, be it for the actual, you know, practice of healthcare or even just yeah. in life. But keeping a positive mindset is, um, it, it obviously is very important and sometimes hard to do but the, the concept of anti-fragility that's that's interesting i haven't heard of that book but definitely one that i want to add to the list uh, <laughs> so so what is the third thing so we've got uh doing what you love keeping a positive mindset what is the next part of the the happy doc nine success trios yeah so the art of medicine is you know when we get to that it, it's just suggestive of the creativity you have in medicine and something that our team has really found in a lot of our podcasts and the guests we interview, for example, is people feel like medicine has become this crazy thing where everything is very regimented. You have a specific set of rules for everything, obviously research based, and you feel kind of like a cog in the machine. So the art of medicine for a lot of people is recapturing those moments of creativity and having a sense of your personal like personality, like really injecting yourself uh, to, to have some enjoyment, some fun in your day. You do not need to feel like a robot in medicine. It's finding creative ways to make the patient experience better while you're at work. It's finding creative ways to study and spend times with your friends while you're in med medical school. The art is a part of being yourself in the tasks that you're doing. You can use the art of medicine in understanding the unique context of the situation you're in, okay? So, you know, like for example, when you're treating hypertension, it's not the same for every person. You have to understand their context. So there's yeah. a little bit, I wouldn't necessarily say creativity in that sense. I just say that the context is very important and you can use your mind to understand the creative context and what you need to do in that situation. You know, even Picmonic, for example, that was using the art of medicine. You were, you guys like kind of literally, right? But you guys took medicine and you're creative and you made a tool that injected some personality, injected some fun, and you're able to be yourself in this crazy world of medicine. So you can still be yourself, be creative, be artistic yep. in this world, and you don't have to lose yourself in the process. I absolutely agree. And it's not, uh, it's not as black and white as it may, may always seem. Obviously, we need to be evidence-based in making decisions uh, and treating and providing care and the research that we do, but there is still an aspect of personality and creativity and human nature to it all that sometimes can get lost or washed away or diluted mm -hmm. because it's uh, obviously challenging and exhausting sometimes. So let's talk, I think that might tie to the next point well, but uh, so the, the fourth point, and I'm gonna bring back up this Picmonic is, um, is what? So we've got uh, doing what you love, keeping a positive mindset, the art of medicine, What's the fourth point? The fourth point is protection. And uh, I bring this up because we have to be really cognizant of protecting yourself in this process. And I, I would say being proactive in that approach. So staying protected, like medical school is really hard and residency is harder. Being an attending can be even more difficult, right? So this process, process doesn't always get easier in, in, in many ways. And so what allows people to get through all that is building networks of defense. So here's a thought experiment. Predict the worst case scenario of your chain of your training. So right now, if you guys are taking notes as you're listening, actually, I would love if everyone was taking notes. Um, you know, what is the worst thing that can happen in what you're working in right now? What plans do you have in place to protect yourself when things don't work out? You know, who do you call? You know, what do you do when you're exhausted? What protective factors and things can you build in your life to help you feel better? Think about building protection as a safety net. You know, connect with your family, friends, you know, spiritual community, school therapist, have a defense strategy before 
issues arise. Right. You know, take some time to list out those possibilities and have your emergency plan in place. And if you need any ideas, obviously ask us in the Q&A. And I bring this up because like it's inevitable you are going to be stressed. You are going to break down. Every single person yeah. is going to. Like it's inevitable. It's gonna what happen. Are you it's going to happen. Yeah. So what are you going to do? Like, who are you going to talk to? Do you have, like, are you aware there's a school therapist? Um, are you aware that, you know, you can reach out to certain friends? Like even talk to your friends about like, guys, like this is going to be tough. Like, can I reach out to you? You know, like simple, like conversations like that, like prep people's minds. Like I might break down. I might have a hard time. Like, can I reach out to you? Like, will you be there for me? And 99 times out of a hundred is going to be a yes. But knowing knowing you have the network. And I think if you look, you know, knowing that you have that protection, uh, even in, I think in the, in the picture, there's like a network of people in that image, like knowing you have people behind you, shields you, protects you, and, and you, you feel a little bit more confident you'll be able to get through this process. Absolutely. And it's, it's an interesting point because I think it comes back to, uh, I don't know, maybe a lot of us are, hesitant or shy or stray away from the idea of uh, needing others, especially in times of weakness, mm -hmm. uh, but especially having a plan and an emergency plan that, you know, if, uh, if things go bad, if, if t hard times come and they will, uh, you know, who can I lean on? So mm -hmm. having that protective network, it definitely is, is really important, but, you know, maybe something not to do when, when it's necessary to think about, in advance and work towards uh, having a plan of action. So I like that. How about uh, the next point? So after, after, yeah. well, explain this next part of the picture. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, so we move on from protection to balance and balance is, it's an interesting concept, especially in medicine, because I feel like it can get really chaotic, but basically every human has basic inputs and outputs that let them function and the quality and regularity of those inputs and outputs are especially necessary for a healthy person. So balance, simple things, like I'm talking about inputs and outputs, what, like, what are you talking about Taylor? I mean, just basically like food, water, exercise, studying, mm -hmm. fun, rest, you know, working and playing and eating and drinking. Like, I hate to say it like this, but in your clinical rotation, you gotta pee, you gotta poop, you gotta eat, you gotta drink, you gotta sleep. And unfortunately, I think, uh, a lot of clinical rotations make it super hard for students. And I, I know anyone listening to this, like if you're a student, if you're a resident, you know what I'm talking about, where you feel like you can't do those things. That's a fight that we always have to have. Um, and we have to really fight to make sure that we're, we're taking care of ourselves. You know, things like um, in this instance, meal prepping, um, really planning out your week about, about like, how are you going to make sure you get the right food, the right nutrition, um, making sure to make time for sleep, making sure that you uh, schedule in some time to hang out with friends, exercising. That's super important. I mean, luckily in medicine, your shifts are pretty scheduled. So then you can plan around that, make sure you get that balance. Pretty general, but very important. So tying to balance, it, uh, it brings up the next point, which you know I definitely struggle with in med school, uh, was, was actually taking the time to, to go have fun, Get that relaxation. So tell me about your version of fun and relaxation in this uh, pick money. For sure, for sure. So fun and re relaxation is basically like in college um, or if you had a different job before, a lot of times um, you have a lot more fun than work. And, you know, medicine is this crazy thing where you're so busy all the time, you actually have to plan out your fun and your relaxation. And then even in this image, you see like there's a, a biker here. There's someone like laying on a hammock. Uh, it's like a pretty just like easy and fun thing to remember in this, in this image. But basically uh, we have to do a better job of spending time with friends, going out, like literally like just having some fun with your friends. Like seriously, it's, it's a great thing to do. I'll tell you often studying super hard and then spending some time to go out with friends. Honestly, I did better on the exams because you need some time to incubate the information and not think about stuff. If you think about like a lot of the great like inventions and creators, a lot of the great stuff that comes to you is not when you're actively studying. It hits you, it hits you in that relaxation pe like period. So you actually like um, functionally speaking, 
that fun and relaxation part actually could help you um, retain information. Um, you know, spending time with your friends is just something that's very important. And I also want to emphasize something that like when you block out that time, let's say you're saying, you know, I'm going to spend an hour and a half, two hours with my friends. A lot of people feel guilty during that time. They're like, they feel guilty. Right. right. And yeah, you're, you're nodding. Like should be, I should be studying. Yeah. I should be working. And Ron, you're like nodding. So I almost feel like you're probably, you probably have had that thought before. Like, you know, you, if you block out the time, that's your fun time. That's your relaxation time. And you did that for a purpose. Just like when you're studying, that's your study time. And you have to keep that really sacred. You don't feel guilty. You just do what you say you're going to do. Um, and there's some great things um, that you can do to relax. I mean, again, that could be in the Q&A. I have some great ideas in terms of some things you can do to relax uh, and enjoy yourself. But that's super important. It's easy to let it go by the wayside. It's easy to feel like, listen, I just need to keep going. I need to keep studying. I have to keep pushing. I don't have time to take a break. But it really does kill the productivity. And it, it it's ultimately, you know, one thing that we talk about, and I've, I've actually had an opportunity to talk about with uh, several people on this webinar series before is, you know, medicine is not a sprint, right? Medical mm -hmm. school is four years residency can be three to five to seven years and then mm -hmm. you're starting a profession right so it's this is not a sprint it's a marathon it's long term and you know you have to take care of yourself first and foremost because uh it it's not gonna get easier the you yeah. know the, the path is consistently hard it's not just your first two years and then third year is easier fourth years like, it just keeps getting to an extent more intense as you level up uh in the process so yeah I think, uh, you know, these, these points, I mean, the, the fun and relaxation, the protection, the balance, um, it is all critical to long-term success and fulfillment and happiness, which is the points you're making. So I'm more or less just agreeing. Uh, yeah. And um, something I want to add in there is a lot of people have this mindset that it's selfish to take care of themselves. Um, and I want to add this in because like, this is like a mental block for a lot of people. It is not selfish to take care of yourself um if you need to change around that dialogue um it, it's actually you're harming your future patients by not taking care of yourself because you're not taking the time to be recharged and giving your full attention and energy to people the dalai lama had a really good uh quote and it, he basically calls it wise selfishness it's taking care of yourself and having the wisdom to take care of yourself to take care of others and right. Super simple concept, but having the wise selfishness to know I need time to rest because that's going to allow me to hit life better. It's going to allow me to contribute to uh, people's lives in a, in a stronger way, more focused way. And I need this time to have fun with my friends and relax. It's beautiful. I dig it. Okay. So we're, uh, well, we've got a few more points and then we'll, we'll kind of recap and then we definitely want to open it up for Q and A. So just to let everybody know one more time there, or if I didn't mention it to begin with on the uh, side of the webinar uh, widget, you should see a chat um, icon and you can send us questions and we are going to do our best to get to some of those here shortly. So, uh, so Taylor, what is the next point? So tell me about. I can uh, click on this to bring it up in the illustration. What is ownership and what is even being depicted here? I love this part of the, the picmonic, but I don't, I don't know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. So the ownership, like I actually really like this part of the image. It's probably one of my favorites is basically like, um, this sailor right here, he's out, he's on a boat, he's going into the waters and he's navigating his life. You see that compass right here and you see the like uh, map of the world essentially. Yeah. He is navigating his life out into the waters and he's owning that. He's, he's navigating this path. Okay. No matter what circumstances come into your way, that is your circumstances. You don't blame, you don't complain, complain to anyone. And you just ask yourself how you can take control of the situation. That book I was talking, telling you about before with um, handling yourself under pressure, yeah. people who succeed, have a very strong internal locus of control. They believe that they can create and control circumstances in their life strongly. And that belief actually lets them succeed more because they believe that they can do something about it. And when you have that belief, your thinking changes and you actually can take control. So let's, let's think of an example of that. So let's say you fail a test. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. If someone fails a test, um, you have one way. One way is to blame, get upset, get mad at the school, say this wasn't my fault, you didn't teach me well, yada, yada. Uh, another take on that is owning that, saying, you know what, I, I could have done a little bit better here. Starting to think of the approaches that maybe um, you could have done a little bit better, reflecting on that. And then also being proactive and you know going up to your teacher saying, look, I, I'm struggling in these areas. What can I do to be better? How can I improve? Speaking to them, they're going to appreciate you, okay? They're going to love that you're being um, really proactive about it. You're taking ownership of the situation. You're saying, look, I didn't understand these concepts. Teach it to me. I'd love to learn it. I missed it on this first time. I want to know it for boards. I want to know it for step. Um, taking that deep sense of ownership, it makes you feel good. It makes them feel good. And uh, you'll, feel, you'll feel like energetically more excited about your life taking ownership and knowing that you can take action um, and think about things in a way that you have a sense of control. It's great. It's not happening to you, but you can take ownership of it. What, uh, and so you kind of wrapped ownership into taking action a little bit. I think that might have been the next point. Yep. Uh, but, but there's also, you know, even when we were talking previously, there was parts of, of action and I think almost the specificity with a word that you had, had used about uh, getting ready for studying and game time and what that looks like for you and kind of uh, I'll, I'll see if, if you bring it back up and if you don't, I'll call it out. But sure. But tell me about what, what it means in your eyes to take action beyond what we already just uh, what you just spoke about with ownership. Yeah. So, you know, action to me is like kind of these are all I mean, I, I want to really tie this in very nicely here. Everything we're talking about, any concept you read, any podcast you listen to, any book you read, any advice you hear, it is not useful until you actually do the thing. So right. even as I'm saying these words, super important, as I'm saying these words, I'm actually doing a lot of this stuff because it would be very inauthentic for me to say this stuff and not act on it. So these are things I'm actually working on as well. So I am not uh, perfect. You know, I, I'm sure Ron, we, Ron has some mistakes as well, things he's working on. Friends. <laughs> And, and so we're all trying to work on this action piece. So, you know, taking deep action is a successful strategy and it's important to follow through on the things that you're starting to develop and learn and kind of trying to figure out. And something that I really like that kind of is a tip that I give to a lot of people. Um, and I don't see enough of this. Honestly, I remember even at school, uh, this happened, but this concept, I call it the war room. It sounds really aggressive, but right. the whole concept here yeah. on the war room, is you create a space where this is your deep study spot and you cognitively choose, this is my time to study. Mm -hmm. You turn off your phone, you turn off all the distractions, you whip out all of your resources, everything, and that's your war room. It could be in the library, it could be, it could be in your house, um, it could be at a cafe, um, but you are setting your timer of X amount of time to study, that's your war room. You're going to battle the material. That's deep. That's an example of deep action. So what I mean ultimately by action is we got to do the things that we are saying that we're doing. Um, that's where the power comes in. That's where the, the ability to really um, take your life to a new level with the advice um, actually works. That's right. Did you have any tips for, uh, you know, a lot of times we can know what we need to do, but struggle to take that action. Uh, yeah. you know, there's, there's always a point in place in life where that happens. Do you have any advice or tips just based on? Yeah, actually a lot. I have a, I mean, I could talk about this concept for a while, but, um, some small tips, honestly, uh, I think one that I love to tell people is start your day off with a win right away. Um, it could be a small thing like, um, and it, it really does. I really do think like kind of the snowball effect, you start small and it can avalanche in a big way. My win that I like to do all the time when I can is waking up and working out right in the morning. So that is something I'm getting up. I've decided I wanna exercise. I go train, I do something like a run or lifting or what have you. And my day has now started with a win. And then that action I took actually lets me take more action later. And yep. it's, it's kind of like, for example, and I know you've had this situation too, when your day starts off with something bad happening, 
And it really takes the wind out of your sails, so to speak, even like in that image we had with the, the guy navigating out into waters, like taking that wind out of your metaphorical sails. So if you can start to have those winds early on that you start to make moves and like uh, in this picture, uh, it's like an iPhone or like an iPod kind of situation with the play button, you're taking action in your life, having those wins early on, I would be as a, I would say is a, is a nice tip. Um, and then that kind of rolls over to the, the rest of your day. I love it. So to wrap this up, last uh, point, kind of summarizing, um, well, before we summarize, last point here, the big picture, how do you put yeah. this all in perspective for what's really important here? You know, it's um, for this point, I actually think it's really funny um, because recently in my residency, I'm going to be a little bit vulnerable with you guys for a second. I had an, an issue that happened where I basically got called out um, by a supervisor and it was really hard. OK, um, you know, it happens sometimes we all make mistakes and I got called out for something. And one of my um, fellow co-residents said, like, Taylor, you took that like really well, like. I didn't break down. I like agreed. I worked through the the issues. I discussed things. Um, and like she actually reached out to me and we kind of confided in how I was feeling about it. And after sharing my feelings, I, she was like, you took that really well. And it's because of this kind of concept. Um, I think before we say we're a medical student, I think it's very American in a lot of ways to say that you are your career. Okay. Mm -hmm. But before we say we're our career, you got to understand like Ron and Taylor, like we're human beings, we're humans. And I am Taylor who is in residency right now. I'm not a resident who is Taylor. You know what I mean? It's not the reverse. So we have to like understand big picture wise, like, look, I woke up this morning with a house, house over my head. My grandpa used to tell me every, every, like when I we used to, uh, you know, ask him how he's doing. He's like, I woke up with a house, you know, a roof over my head and food on the table. And it really is that simple. Yeah. It, it really is that simple. You woke up today, you are in a substantially better place. If you're listening to this, you are in a substantially better place than a lot of people. You got food on the table, you have a shelter over your head, you're learning in a, prof a profession that helps a lot of people's lives and you're learning a lot of this information. Um, like we're, we're getting so focused on how terrible our lives are because we failed an exam, but do you realize how blessed and, and how amazing your life actually is? Right. Like when you really think about it, um, that that's kind of the big picture. Everything's okay. You're right. doing fine. You're live, you're working. Look, you're smiling, you, you get it, right? You're live, you're working, you're working on something, you're building your life. Like your life is good. Like in the bigger scope of things, like by virtue of you listening to this, your life's amazing. Your self-worth is not determined by a failed exam, a mistake you had with a patient, a conversation that wasn't pleasant with a coworker or a friend. This life is a journey. One day might feel like the worst, but life goes on and you will get through it. You know, expanding yourself to the broad view reminds you that your life is quite incredible. And that's the big picture. I couldn't say it better myself. We are all incredibly fortunate. Uh, so it's, it's hard sometimes though to get caught up in the grind uh and and we call it like the trenches i mean i'm down in the trenches and i'm fighting the day-to-day -day, um battle and it's 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 hard to step back and put things in perspective sometimes so uh yeah. looking at the big picture so let's take one more second before we jump to questions um i'm going to put this image back up i want you to just kind of walk through it one more time summarize it piece by piece or just do do whatever's natural so We've got the happy doc, and you are the happy doc. You're the essence of, of the Woo! happy doc. Woo! Love it. So, <laughs> so with this happy doc, what, what do we got here? All right. So being a happy doctor is about having a passion for what you do. So you got to love. You have to have love in that, that part of it, okay? You have to stay positive, and you have to have the positive mindset. You have to find creativity in your work or the art of medicine. You have to build out protection. Okay, you have to find a sense of balance. You want to build in fun and relaxation. You want to take full ownership of your circumstances. And you want to take deep action to take advantage of your opportunities. And then lastly, it's important to think about the big picture. That is, everything is going to be okay and it will continue to be so. You have succeeded thus far. You have the skills, you have the talents uh, that will provide numerous opportunities for you in medicine. 
but more importantly in life. So keep learning, keep growing. And those are the major concepts uh, that you'll see in that Picmonic. That's phenomenal. I love, I love the Picmonic. I love uh, that you guys were able to create that. And, yeah, it was awesome. Um, definitely. It's a neat, 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 il- neat illustration. So what we want to do now is uh, I've seen a couple questions come in. I know it's Sunday. Uh, so might be a few less, uh, few less questions and active uh, participants this afternoon. Taylor, did you actually have uh, an open thread on your end as well? I, I didn't know. Uh, actually, no, I, uh, I did not. All right, all right. Um, so we definitely have a lot of love coming in and, uh, and people saying just, uh, you know, thank you, Dr. Brana, appreciate you. Uh, love the advice. Um, so if there's any questions, just want to give everybody another minute or two to chime in. I think it's a, it's an interesting opportunity to, to get into some more specifics, but if not, um, I also want to give you an opportunity. Let's do that real quick. Let's give you an opportunity to talk about, uh, the happy doc podcast or the website or just anything out there, uh, that you're doing to help others just, uh, I want to give you a minute to talk about what you've got going on as well. Sure. Yeah. So while the questions are populating, um, some of the things about kind of what we're doing. So first to find us, you can go on the happy doc.com. You can also go on to iTunes and search the happy doc and all of our social media handles are at happy doc podcast. So that's on Twitter. It's on Instagram. It's on Facebook. Um, you just use at happy doc podcast at the end of all of those links. Um, basically, like I explained before, we get to reach out and speak to people who feel fulfilled or doing something interesting in medicine. And the basis about that is, you know, what makes them feel fulfilled, um, in whatever aspect or work that they're doing. And we kind of break that down. Um, we're going, it's not going to just be the podcast, by the way, although that's the focus right now. Because of what we're hearing from guests, we're also building out like um, some tools we think will be helpful for for students and doctors in the future. Um, but that's kind of later down the line. Um, yep. Beyond that, I think like and I was telling Ron earlier before we had this conversation, there are just so many gems and really awesome quotes that I would have never known things I would have never known unless I asked the question and talked to these people. And, and so I really think that it is valuable information for people to listen to other voices, like literal voices on a podcast. You don't waste time. You can listen while you're exercising or while you're driving and you can learn some gems that, you know, make your day feel a little bit better. Um, and I have many examples of that. So that's great. Uh, so I want to throw out a question that you, you're getting asked about. What do you recommend? recommend about diet and brain function uh drinking too much coffee can be harmful or just in general supplements or brain enhancing stuff and this might not be something that uh uh you're you're able to endorse or talk about uh so um I, i'll talk about it on a personal level so disclaimer like this isn't like you know <laughs> no i mean i'm being honest so disclaimer like this is not nutritional information or something that like anyone listening to this should take to heart um i think obviously like when it comes to this like you should actually see a dietitian. I think that um, nutrition can be very personalized um, and people have uh, different things that are going to provide them more energy than others. So you kind of have to, you know, take what I say with a grain of salt. Um, I am not a coffee drinker. Um, I actually have kind of the reaction that um, caffeine makes me super jittery and all of those things. So Mm -hmm. I stay away from that. Um, I'm for me, I, I'm a big fan of waking up in the morning. I know that vegetables are healthy for me. I throw a lot of green stuff and fruits, you know, dark leafy green vegetables. I throw in some fruits in the morning, a little bit of uh, lemon squeeze, um, a lot of fluid in the morning, and I make myself a smoothie, and that really gets me going. I feel great. Um, I do a lot of, like, energy kind of hacks, so to speak, by the way. Like, this is just, you know, fun thing about me. I take cold showers, which is super weird for most people. Um I think it's a great way for me to get some energy in the morning. And that's probably my dose of caffeine, honestly. And if I do it, I notice a difference. That's a personal thing. Yep. Um, the smoothie in the morning is really great for me. Um, I like to, you know, buy a bunch of 
because I don't have always the time to make salad, I buy a bunch of bag salads and bring that with me. And then I'll kind of try to stay clean. Um, I think that obviously, as you guys, guys know, loading up on a lot of sugars um, and having a lot of caffeine and eating donuts and um, eating, eating very heavy foods all the time, uh, processed foods is um, personally for me has been very taxing yep. and I feel depleted. So I, I really don't think you have to make it too complicated. I mean, um, most people know what clean eating really is. And yep. it's kind of like we talked about before. There's a difference between knowing and action. So I would love for everyone to take some action. Love it. No, let's keep it simple on that. Uh, another question, you know, and I, I kind of feel like some of this has been covered, but uh, for somebody who's just starting medical school, what would be a couple of tips or tricks, pieces of advice, things that you know now that you didn't know then? Yeah. Um, successful, and it's just kind of a general broad statement. I would say um, from like the general medical advice, I would say um, this is a tip that would have helped me sooner would be I use something called, I mean, I, there's probably a better way of saying this, but the onion method or layers method. So in college, the way I studied was I learned things really deeply the mm -hmm. first go around. Yep. In medical school, I didn't do that because there's so much information. There's no way I'm going to remember everything. Right. So I did something called the passes or onions method where when I'm talking about layers, what I mean is to say that I would look at, let's say there was 30 lectures on a test, which is a crazy amount of lectures. Each lecture was only like three questions. So 30 lectures, three questions. I had 90 questions on 30 lectures. I didn't have the time to spend to really focus on one lecture, even if I didn't get it. So I spent time studying, getting through all the information, getting first passes, yep. highlighting things I thought were important. Then the next time, second pass, I go a little deeper. I ask some more questions. I'm like, what is this? Third pass, fourth pass. So I try to get through all the information multiple times for it to sink in. And then each time I might have remembered something a little bit more. I, I generally found if I could get get through lectures lectures three times, I would I would be able to pass or do better. Um, and I, I think you can't waste your time. You have to kind of just get through the information. That's great. Uh, so another question, and I'm getting them on multiple devices here. So yeah, be distracted. Uh, and this is one that ultimately hit home for me, but what do you recommend regarding handle, handling the huge volume of information? And I think you just covered that to an extent is maybe broad stroke, not super deep on individual, let's say subjects or categories, mm -hmm. up to the point that you have a, a general conceptual understanding. But ultimately there's the, the, you know, people would say being in medical school is like drinking from a fire hose of information, yep. right? It's just a lot. Uh, yeah more than any other time uh, in life. So, so what did you do in order to actually retain information long-term? Most helpful for me, honestly, um, besides all those passes is memory tools and yeah. memory tools include, and you guys should know this, you know, I'm not, again, I'm not going to tell you something you haven't heard before. Um, mnemonics, mm -hmm. super helpful. If you're more visual colors, graphics, photos, pick mnemonic as an example. Yep. Um, if I actually, it's funny. Um, a lot of times it was talking about the information on the exam the day, the night before. Yeah. And it would be something funny that my friend said that I didn't even realize would make me remember it and it would stick out. So actually talking about the information, um, people will bring out once you've studied enough, I would say just talk, like sitting down, just going through lectures and talking about information, especially the tough lectures, people will bring up important points you didn't consider or you missed it in lecture that that was something you talked about or you missed it on you world or your other question banks that you didn't think you know you didn't think was important they they say it's important they made a differentiation you didn't hear so teaching talking discussing was another thing that like oh crap that's a good point i didn't think about it like that and they'll and that'll so i think looking at information from different perspectives um, yep. memory tools all those things will be very helpful no, that's great uh and I think you already covered this one a little bit too, but uh, mm. overcoming burnout, what's what's a tip or trick? Um, yeah, so from, from the burnout perspective, you have to first realize if you're starting to get burnt out, okay? So you have to know the signs, because when you're burnt out, it's too late. So if you've reached that point, you do not have the energy to pull yourself out usually, and it's very hard. 
So you have to understand the signs and the symptoms, mainly like uh, if you stop feeling empathetic to people, if you start feeling like um, you can't connect emotionally to people, that's called depersonalization. Um, that's a sign of burnout. Um, starting to get a, a, a really deep sense of anxiety and depression. Um, that'll start to kind of create the burnout symptoms. If you start losing your passion or sense for why you're doing all this stuff, that's an issue. If you're not smiling, if you can't connect to people, if you can't, uh, if you feel like completely like you're so far behind, which a lot of students do, by the way, like we all feel behind, that's fine. Um, those are things that, you know, you want to consider like, how do I take control, ownership of this? And I think the way then we have to tackle it is as we start to feel that way, we uh, use our protection, like what we talked about. We talk to our friends. We ask them, like, hey, look, I'm behind. What are you doing? Because everyone's feeling the heat. You know, actually, I would say that's another tip, too, is knowing mentally everyone's under a lot of stress and we are going to get through this together. Yeah. Um, talking about your feelings, working through it. Um, if you're that exhausted, you might need, I'm telling you guys, like, people feel guilty sleeping, yep. people feel guilty having some fun you need to do those things. A lot of people are like, I don't have time to sleep. I don't have time to rest. I don't have time to have fun. Guys, if, if you don't build that in um, long term, it's really going to hurt you. And actually by doing that, again, you're boosting your energy and you'll be able to you know, do stuff. Don't feel guilty for taking care of yourself. If you're feeling burnt out, um, taking that time for yourself um, ultimately can help you study, feel better, and then you'll be able to retain the information more. I would say one thing uh, on top, you know, burnout is not something that you want to fight through. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's not, uh, it's not one where you just continue to push and go harder. It really is, you know, at a point in time where you feel that exhaustion or burnout can manifest for different people in different ways. Yes. And as you're saying, I think there's a lot of indicators, but it's, you know, if you've got people you love in your life for that protective, uh, network who are saying you need to take a break, you need to get some sleep, you need to, relax and rest this weekend, uh, pay attention to that and, and take advantage and, and do step back. Because as you mm -hmm. said, once, once you really are to the point of burning out, um, it's just, uh, it's harder to get back up and, and move forward a lot of times. So, so avoiding it or doing not avoiding, but, uh, building in things in your life that will help you, whether it's the fun and relaxation, the balance, the ultimately there's a lot of different ways to, to try and avoid it. But once it hits, then you do need to step out and not just continue to push through. So, yeah. And, and full disclosure also just to add on, like I saw a therapist in med school, most schools have a way, uh, someone to reach out to a counselor therapy, right. whatever it is, it, it can really help because a lot of things happen in your head that, it sounds worse in your head than it really is. Right. Yeah. And, and I mean, yeah. And as you say it out loud, you're like, Oh, that was dumb. I, why am I so stressed about that? And then like, yeah. So they're like, yeah, it is. And then, but in your mind, it feels worse. And as you yeah. say things out loud, it kind of changes the way you even think about it. So, I mean, be open to asking for help. It's fine. You're trying to be a professional here. You can ask for help. They're asking for your help. You can ask for help. You're humans. <laughs> yeah, it's not ironic and, and don't need an ego about it. Uh, yeah. It's okay to let um, your guard down and, and, and get help. I mean, well, yeah. something I feel like I burned out in medical school and even being an entrepreneur and the, the, the journey of Picmonic over the last, uh, what, it's seven years. It's yeah. I've burned out w w with this multiple times where, you know, 100%. it's hard. And, uh, you know, it's the challenges in life that uh, as we get through them, they make us stronger. But that doesn't mean that uh, it's easy to always get through them. So, Burnout through. Well, I think, uh, you know, we're kind of wrapping up on the hour. So uh, first and foremost, want to, uh, you know, extend just sincere gratitude, uh, Taylor, Dr. Brown, for you joining us today and sharing some of your wisdom with uh, our audience. You know, we've got students around the world who use uh, Picmonic, and I, uh, I think that it's really, really uh, just a neat opportunity for them to hear from others who've been successful. Um, so the the happy doc uh podcast the happy uh definitely encourage everyone to check it out listen to someone say that. i think you, you have what like over 50 podcasts already yeah so we have um recorded around 55 i think live it's around 50 right now so that's fantastic so i know i need to go and catch up on some of those <laughs> that I, I can learn from this even uh being outside of medicine but for also those who are listening today um Taylor is hooking everyone up with a discount code to Picmonic. Um, so 
Happy Doc 30 is a 30% discount code that you can use for the next 48 hours. Uh, we will be emailing that out if you RSVP for the webinar. So that will come as well. Uh, it, that gives you 30% off any subscription on Picmonic uh, outside of monthlies. Uh, and that's for, I think, all product lines. So I know that we have some pre-house students, some medical students, even it looks like some nursing students online. Uh, it's any one of our products. Uh, but go and follow the Happy Doc. Check out some of the podcasts. If you're interested, check out Picmonic for free. Subscribe using the Happy Doc 30 promo code. Uh, Taylor, again, thank you so much for your time. Any last parting words or wisdom before we we say our goodbyes? Yeah, uh, guys, please smile. Please use humor in your life. Have some fun. Um, if you're beating yourself up right now, it, it's really not a great feeling. So take those moments and I really do moments just like appreciate your life that big picture thing that's actually a lot of it you know that's who you are deep down inside so really appreciate that and smile a little more um, you'll get a lot more out of your life dr. Brown great advice thank you so much look forward to having you on the show again sometime if uh, if you choose to and good luck with yeah. everything everyone online and joining us today thank you so much you guys all have a wonderful weekend and we will see you again soon